I'm Peter Block in New Orleans at the H annual meeting. On my left is Steve Nissen from Cleveland, and Steve has been interested in cholesterol-lowering drugs forever. As far as I can remember, Steve and I have known each other a long time, and we talk about this about every two or three years. And uh, now we have a dynamite drug, PCSK9 inhibition, which uh, in fact lowers LDL cholesterol to crazily low levels. So Steve, tell me about this PCSK9 uh, inhibitor trial, and then let's talk about what it does to the coronary circulation, because that's really the end point here. What we wanted to know was the lowest we've ever gotten with our statin trials, looking at regression and progression using IVUS, was about 60 milligrams per deciliter. We wanted to see what would happen if we could go much, much lower. And so we gave uh, everybody statins, almost 100% of patients were on statins, 60% on high intensity statins. And half the patients self-injected with 420 milligrams of the PCSK9 inhibitor evolucumab. The group that got a statin alone had good LDL reduction. They were at about 93. The group that got the combination therapy with a statin and evolucumab got to an LDL, an average LDL of 36. And the question was, would that produce additional benefits? There were two possibilities. One is that there's no further benefit once you get down below 50 or 60, and the other is that there's continued benefit. What we saw is the people that were on a statin alone at an LDL of 93 had neither progression nor regression. The group that got to an LDL of 36 had very highly significant regression, uh, P less than 001. They had less plaque volume at the end of the trial after 18 months of treatment than they had at the beginning. Um, the 64% uh, of the people that got combination therapy actually regressed, and about a third progressed. So we didn't regress everybody, but we regressed a lot of people. So we're really reducing plaque burden in the coronaries if we can get LDL down to these very, very low levels. You know, Steve, one of the early trials uh, showed that plaque regression with high-dose statins and so forth reduced uh, plaque volume about 1%, 1.5% 1 and so forth. We're talking about the same kinds of numbers here. That's right. Is that enough? Well, it turns out that a little bit of change in plaque volume translates into a very big change in plaque behavior. And so those same studies in the clinical outcome trials showed an enormous reduction in event rates, as we've seen with high-intensity statin therapy. So a little bit of plaque reduction goes a long way, probably because we're stabilizing the plaques and we're avoiding the events that lead to morbidity and mortality. All right, one last question we'll call it a day. <clears throat> if you lower your LDL to 35 or 36, whatever, uh, does your brain come apart and does your spinal cord collapse? Well, we looked very carefully at that and we saw no safety uh, disadvantages. Uh, there were no more myalgia, diabetes, neurocognitive function. Everything was, was fine that we saw nothing in the group that got to these low LDL levels. We used to say you can't be too rich or too thin. We now say you can't be too rich, too thin, or have too low an LDL. So there you have it, the PCSK9 inhibition uh, gets another kudo. Uh, we'll have to see longer term, of course, whether or not this makes any long-term differences, but the first order here is that this is very exciting news. Very exciting news, and we await now the outcome trials. Thank you, Steve.